Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome to a new Vlogmas video. I'm going to be doing a get ready with me Q&A today. I think I do this every Vlogmas, but I like to do this once a year because I get a lot of new subscribers every month and a lot of you guys have and a lot of you guys know nothing about me because I just really show my day in the life. I don't really talk about myself a lot. So, you know, just to have you guys know me a little bit better, have you get to know the person you're watching in the vlogs. I wanted to answer some commonly asked questions and just anything you're wanting to know about my life, my personal life, relationships, finances, my career, anything like that. And I will show you guys the makeup products I use to get my everyday makeup look pretty much i do this makeup look every day when i'm going out or when i just want to look all pretty this is like my go-to makeup routine i'll show you guys the whole routine i'll show you all the products that i use and i'll link all the products in my description so i opened up some questions so i opened up so i opened up the floor for you guys to ask me any questions you had literally anything you wanted to know i asked on my instagram a few days ago and you guys left some really good questions there are a lot of questions so i'm going to do my best to answer them all in this video but if i don't answer anything and you're dying to know something leave a comment below so we'll just get into the makeup routine stay tuned to learn more about me and to see my full makeup look so for the first questions i'm going to answer my most commonly asked questions and kind of like the basics and i'm going to prime my face with the refi primer this has niacinamide in it so it's very good for your skin oh let me put my my bangs back i have these little clips that i got from amazon okay so basics i am 31 years old why did i just say 31 i'm 30. oh god why am i getting ahead of myself guys i'm 30 years old i am turning 31 in february my birthday's february 10th i'm an aquarius <laughs> That's funny. I've never said I was 31 before. I guess I'm just excited for my 30s, which I am. Next, I'm going to be putting on this Natural Glow Enhancer from L'Oreal. I put this on the high points of my face, my cheekbones, my forehead, and it gives a really nice shimmer glimmer. Put this on before my foundation to kind of brighten up my face a little bit more. For foundation, I'm using my very favorite Luminous Silk from Armani Beauty. This shade might be a little bit too dark. You know what, I actually have a lighter shade of this. I think it's time to whip out the winter foundation. All right, that's my winter shade. I was using this one in the summer when I was a little bit tanner, but I think those days are gone, so. This is the shade 5.9. Okay, so back to the basics. I'm from Maryland, I was born and raised here. Oh man, perfect shade. That's my first time trying it. Oh, perfect match. My ethnicity is half Filipino. My mom is from the Philippines. She immigrated here when she was 26 and I'm half white. My dad is from Minnesota slash Wisconsin, that region. He and my mom met when he was in the Navy. They got married, had two kids. Me, I am the oldest child. And my younger brother, Joey, he is three years younger than me. I am a full-time content creator. I did graduate from college. I went to Salisbury University on the Eastern Shore of Maryland, and I got my degree in communication arts with a focus on public relations, journalism, and I also had a minor in marketing. I graduated in 2015, and straight from college, I was working in the corporate world. I used to work in communications and social media for several public health companies. I have a pimple. For concealer, I'm using the Tarte Shape Tape. This is the shade 22N. So I was working in corporate America for probably, I think it was four years, three and a half years. I quit my corporate job in 2020, smack in the middle of quarantine and COVID. It was a very nerve wracking decision. I was crying, I was debating. It was very scary to do, but I did it and I went full time with content creating and I never turned back. The best decision I ever made. I think that's all the basics. So now let me get into more specific questions that I got from you guys on Instagram. Have you ever been visited the Philippines? Were you born in the US? So yeah, I was born in the US and I have been to the Philippines one time only in my life, but I don't remember it because it was the year after I was born, I think I was 18 months, almost two years old. I went with my mom, we stayed for a month, and I, I remember nothing from that trip. So technically I have been there, but I don't know if I've been there. To set my concealer for face powder, I'm using the Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Airbrush Finishing Powder. But we are going back to the Philippines next year. Because my mom wants to go for her 60th birthday. Her birthday is in May, but May is very, very hot in the Philippines. 
So instead of going in May, we're going to go in December of next year. And we're staying there for Christmas and New Year's. We're going there for about a month. And we're staying with our family there. So it'll be my first time back in... Well, actually, it's going to be the first time for both me and my mom that we went back in how many years? Let's see, I'm 30. So 29 years. My mom has not seen her family in 29 years. And everyone is there. Her parents, her cousins, her siblings. My mom is one of nine siblings. She's the second oldest. And all of her siblings are there. All of their kids are there. She literally has no family members in the United States aside from one cousin. And she's coming with us too to go visit the family. So we're excited. I'm kind of nervous because we're going to be living there for a month. And if you guys know me, you guys know how... I obsessed I am with my routine and my home and my surroundings, so it's gonna be a big change. Um, but I'm still excited. It'll be a new adventure. By the way, oh my god, I broke two nails. I'm so upset about it. I was opening a cabinet to get a glass um, of water, and I just opened it so hard, and my nails just slammed into the next cabinet. It was so painful. So I gotta go get those fixed. But anyway, contour. We're using the Charlotte Tilbury contour wand. Oh, another commonly asked question is, does Anto live with you, my boyfriend? So yes, we're both on the lease for this apartment and he spends the majority of his time here, but he does not have his office set up here. He has to go to his parents' house to work because he has a huge setup. He has like three, four monitors. He has so much equipment. He's also a YouTuber. There's no room in this apartment for his stuff. We're actually considering making this office his office because I use the office sometimes. I mostly use it just to go on my Peloton or to do my makeup. I do sit at my desk, but I would much rather prefer to work outside in the living room in the kitchen. So we're in the process of trying to like move his stuff over here. But yeah, we're both on the lease and he spends most of his time here. I get that question all the time. I know he's not in the vlogs a lot, but it's because, like I said, he has a job. He has to leave to go work for his job. He can't work from here. Sometimes he does, but like to record his videos, he needs to be somewhere else to record those videos. So hopefully that makes sense. And then another question was, do we plan on buying a house? So yes, we do talk about that all the time. It would be very ideal to get a house because rent is just so, so wasteful, but... We're not ready to take on that responsibility right now. We will in the near future and we're already like talking about it, but it's just not the right time for us. And the renting life is just so much more convenient and easier for us. Obviously, maybe financial wise, it's not the smartest, but we're very content with the way our life is right now. I literally hate moving and I don't know the first thing about buying a house. So we're gonna, you know, learn and, eventually do it but for right now we're just very content with our life here i use the fenty contour stick to contour my nose by the way okay someone asked if i plan on ever going back to doing a corporate job and honestly i think yes i feel like eventually i will go back to that because let's be honest this whole youtube influencing thing i'm not going to be doing this forever i'm not going to be doing this when i'm 50 years old i mean who knows maybe i will i've seen people around that age make videos and make content and they're killing it so honestly, um, I wouldn't mind going back to that type of work environment, but I think if I did go back to the corporate world, I would want to work a remote job, and I feel like most people are like in that boat. I think most people like to work remotely. Um, but I kind of miss having that, you know, team environment, like the work, and like working with other people, like having coworkers. One thing I do not miss is having a micromanager because every single corporate job I've ever had and I've had three corporate jobs from the time I graduated college up until I quit for YouTube. Um, I've had three managers and they were all micromanagers and I used to be so stressed and it was so toxic in every work environment I was in. So, I don't know, three toxic work environments. I feel like that wasn't a coincidence. I feel like corporate work environments, especially in the communications and marketing field is just really toxic, I don't know. And all those jobs were in person. So I think I would be able to handle them a lot better if it was remote. Um, but yeah, I think about it all the time. I don't rule it out. Like, I would not mind doing that again. Like, God forbid if something ever happened to, like, my YouTube channel or whatever and I had to go back to getting a corporate job, I would not mind. For bronzer, we're going to use my Too Faced Sun Bunny bronzer. And then another thing I miss about the 9 to 5 is the routine of, like, waking up you know, doing your morning routine, getting ready, you know, getting dressed, driving to the office, like preparing my coffee, sitting at my desk. I used to love my desk at my previous job or the 
last job that I had before I quit. Um, I used to love my little desk. I had a desk by the window and we used to have Keurigs in the office. I miss Keurig coffee. I miss, you know, like greeting my coworkers in the morning, talking about the latest office gossip. I'll be the first to admit, I used to partake in the office gossip. That's literally how I got through my day. And I like to watch people's routines on TikTok. They're like five to nine before my nine to five and like day in the life at work. I really enjoy those videos. Like the girls that work in the office and they have their little cubicles. I love to see their setups and I love to see what they do during the workday. And then also I love to see people's five to nine routine after their corporate job, like when they get home to see what they do. I love those videos. So maybe, I don't know, if I ever decided to go back to having a nine to five, I could incorporate that into my content and create like day in the life of a corporate girl and my five to nine after my nine to five, something like that. I feel like that would be kind of fun. Next, I'm gonna put on some blush. I'm using the Patrick Ta Double Take. It's a cream and powder blush. And this is in the shade She's That Girl. I put the cream blush on first and then I layer the powder blush over it. Someone asked if I have any 2024 travel plans. And I have a few. I feel like 2024, I will finally be able to like travel more. Cause before COVID, I used to travel several times a year. And then I feel like after that, I just never really got back into it. Like things would just come up. Um, but yeah, so like I said, plan on going to the Philippines in December of next year. My birthday's in February and me and Anto want to take another trip. We were thinking Hawaii, we haven't decided on the place yet, but Hawaii is like at the top, um, or maybe even just going back to California. We used to go to LA like every single year, mostly for his work because he was involved with a lot of brands. He would go on a lot of brand trips and I would go with him. Um, and so it's like one of our favorite places to visit, but we haven't been in a while. And I was thinking this time I wanna like go stay in the Malibu area, Santa Monica. So I would love to go back there for my birthday in February. And then one of my best friends, Ida, she is turning 30 in February also. Our birthdays are six days apart. And she wants to take a trip because it's like our tradition in our friend group because we all turned 30 this year. She's the last one to turn 30. And we all took trips for our 30th. If you guys remember, I went to Vegas for one of my friend's birthdays. And then we went to a little cabin trip for my birthday. So we're gonna do that for our birthday. And then Anto's birthday, he wants to like do a little summer, little quick trip. So yeah, those are the plans for now. The only thing that's set in stone is Philippines. Um, and I think that's gonna be the biggest trip I take. I don't think I'm gonna be going to Asia any other times in the year except for next December. All right, I'm gonna do my eyebrows now. I use this eyebrow pencil from AOA Studio. It's from this online shop called shop miss a this was a dollar it's like an online dollar beauty store you have like all the best makeup for literally a dollar everything's under ten dollars some some things are five dollars and the most expensive thing i think is like 10 or 15 dollars biggest lesson you learned in 2023 i think the biggest thing i learned is that nothing else matters except your well-being i mean obviously other things matter <laughs> like your family matters your loved ones your kids all that but like I'm talking about in terms of, you know, job, working, none of that matters. You gotta prioritize your mental and physical health. And before this year, I never did that. I never prioritized my physical health. I've always been big on mental health. I always prioritize my mental health. But in terms of physical health, I just didn't care to take care of myself. But this year I started finally taking care of my body, my physical health, my weight. If you guys saw my weight loss video, I'd like to talk more about that. So the biggest thing I learned is to, you know, take care of myself. Other things can wait, work can wait, responsibilities, most of them can wait. Some of them are urgent, but most of them can wait. I put myself first, for sure. I'm gonna um, finish off my under eyes with the Huda Beauty Easy Bake and Snatch Powder. This is in the shade Cherry Blossom Cake. It's a very light pink color, but I like this color for under eyes because it helps brighten up your under eyes. It also helps kind of blur the like under eye wrinkles a little bit. And after I set my under eyes, I always spray to kind of like moist it up a little bit so that it's not completely dry. And I use the Milk Hydro Grip Set and Refresh Spray. Just a little bit. And I heard that it's good to use a setting spray for every layer of makeup you do. So like spray this after you do your foundation, and then your blush and bronzer sprayed after that. So I've never really tried it. I mainly just um, apply this 
after I do my eyes and my my blush. We're gonna do some eyeshadow now, a very light eyeshadow makeup. I don't do anything drastic and I always use browns and natural colors. So this palette is from Morphe. This is called um, the Artistry Palette. It's in the color Sweetness and Spice. Someone asked, do you ever feel pressure to get filler slash Botox, etc., being an influencer? Yeah, I'll admit I've thought about it. Like the thought crossed my mind a couple times, but I don't think I will ever do it. I don't know. Maybe it'll change in 20 years when I get wrinkles but I'm very afraid to like alter my face in any way just because I know if I do like I feel like there's no going back I could be wrong maybe it doesn't affect you that much I'm just kind of nervous of stuff like that I don't like doing any procedures unless it's absolutely mandatory mandatory for my health and I of course you know like most people wish there were things I can change about my face but I'm very content with how I look I don't feel pressure from others um, especially when it comes to cosmetic surgery or cosmetic, not surgery, cosmetic alterations or, you know, Botox and stuff. I've heard it has good benefits. Like it's not just about changing your appearance. I heard it also is good if you have a deviated septum or, um, if like you have like jaw problems and like, I don't know, I'm not very knowledgeable. I've heard though that it, it is beneficial in other ways other than the way you look, but I just don't think I see myself getting it done. So I guess to answer the question, yes, I have thought about it, but it's not because of the pressure from others. I've thought about it just for my own benefit. I would never change my appearance based on what's trending or based on what everyone else is doing because that's just such a drastic permanent change. Like I don't even have any tattoos because I'm just afraid of the perma permanent, what's the word? Permanentity. I'm just afraid of how permanent it is. I will say though, what I have thought about several times is getting a breast augmentation, but again, not because I feel pressured but because I kind of want it but again I don't think I would ever do that I'm just too scared I'm gonna take this Dior eyeshadow palette this is called mirror mirror it's the number six five nine and I'm gonna take the kind of like light brown goldish color and put that on my eyelid someone asked how do you handle negative family members uh so like i said like with my mom's family none of them are here and for my dad's family none of them are in maryland either they're all in minnesota and kind of spread out in the rest of the country but none here in the dmv so we actually have no family members around here aside from each other like the immediate family my parents me and my brother we're the only ones that are here so i've never had to deal with any negativity from family members i was very very close with my grandparents never had any neg negativity from them they were actually like the best grandparents ever it's really hard when you have a big family like i personally have a big family but like i don't live near them but i know from you know seeing other people's experiences how stressful it can be when you have to deal with so many family members, especially when they're negative. I feel like communication is so key and I think the biggest thing is you really have to put your pride and your ego down because I feel like a lot of family conflict arises from pride or at least from what I have seen with like other people's family conflicts is that like everyone is very prideful and no one ever wants to admit when they're wrong and I feel like if you want to start to fix something you have to take that first step but it's hard because you can't convince your family members to put their pride aside and to have them admit when they're wrong. So I feel like if you're dealing with something like that, the first thing that you can do is to kind of be that bigger person and try to like, you know, talk to people, communicate, maybe admit you're wrong, even though maybe you weren't wrong, but sometimes you just gotta be the bigger person. But sometimes even that doesn't work. And then at that point, I would just say like, you gotta put yourself first and your own mental health and well-being first, especially if it's a toxic family member. I mean, that's what I would do if I was in that situation. I would probably just like eliminate myself from the situation, but only after I've tried my best to mediate and communicate. Sometimes you just gotta walk away. And then sometimes it'll resolve itself. Other times it's like, okay, well, it's meant to be if this person's gonna be toxic in my life. I'm lining my eyes with this eyeliner and I don't even know where this is from. It's called Dragon Liner. Does anyone know what brand this is? It's really good though, so I really like it. But I'm gonna just do a little tiny wing on each eye. Favorite book you will always recommend? Mm, let's see. I have a few that come to mind. The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo was a really, really good read. I feel like I would definitely recommend that. And I would definitely read that again. I know it's for teenagers, but the Hunger Games series, those are some good books. 
that's like my favorite favorite dystopian book series slash movie series i'm so obsessed with the books and the movies i watch the movies at least once a week i just saw the new one in theaters and i just read the the newest book too the ballads of songbirds and and snakes and oh, so good extremely loud and incredibly close was a really good book too i read that when i was younger but i would still read that to this day and i think they made a movie about it i never saw the movie but i just remember really resonating with the book i think that's also for teenagers but i think adults can read that too why not my camera's dying let me change my battery really quick okay i'm gonna be using the ysl lash clash mascara so i got a lot of questions about being a content creator such as what brand would you love to work with how to go from gifted to paid brand deals and then staying motivated for being self-employed so in terms of staying motivated for being self-employed you have to actually like what you do because if i didn't like what i did and if I wasn't so passionate about it, I probably wouldn't have as much motivation. Like for example, I had no motivation at my nine to five because I was not passionate about it and I just didn't love it. But I love, love, love filming content, sharing new ideas and new things and just expressing myself through beauty and fashion and wellness and all that stuff. So that's how I find my motivation. But let's say maybe you are passionate about something but you still can't find motivation. You have to really just picture how you want your life to look. Picture where you wanna live, what kind of life you wanna live, what kind of lifestyle you wanna have. Just picture your ideal life in terms of your career and maybe personal life too. And then you have to work towards that. Cause that's also another thing that I did, especially when I was working my nine to five. Um, and I really wanted to start a YouTube channel but I was scared to and I just didn't know how to get the motivation to start. I just pictured myself thinking, okay, like what do I want my life to look like? I would love to work with brands. I would love to work with fashion companies and like do, you know, try on hauls and stuff like that. Like that was my passion and goal. Like I really wanted to do it so bad. So I envisioned it and then I just took the plunge and I did it. And it was just so much fun. Like once I started posting videos, I realized how fun it was to sit down and record and to plan and to execute and to just see the content come together and like put together a aesthetic and stuff like that. It just got so fun. So that's kind of how I found motivation for being self-employed. And then honestly, when it becomes your full-time job, I had to have the motivation because it was my livelihood and if I didn't work, I didn't make money. So that's really what pushed me to work so much. But if you do have another job, you know, what what, what pushed me when I still had my 9 to 5 is just the life I wanted to live, the brand I wanted to make for myself and just the kind of person I wanted to become. And then in terms of going from gifted to paid collab deals, honestly at this point, you really don't even need that many followers to start doing paid collaborations because the whole influencer world is changing. TikTok really changed the game with a lot of these brand collabs and stuff like that. You don't need 100,000 followers. You don't even need 50,000 followers. You can have less than 25, even around 10,000 followers. You can have that amount and you can still get paid to do brand deals. And I need to do a whole content creator video. I will film that maybe in the next few days or maybe I'll include that in one of the Vlogmas days. But I will talk more about that because the last time I filmed a content creator video, everything has changed. Things are so different now and they keep changing and like you have to keep up with the changes if you want your brand to still be relevant. That's why I'm really trying my best to like, you know, keep up with the trends and, you know, do whatever is popular in terms of social media strategies. Like that's why I started going really ham on TikTok because that's where a lot of brand deals are going and I have gotten so many brand deals from TikTok now. So not even just YouTube. I think honestly in the past year I, I did maybe more or maybe the same amount of brand deals on TikTok as YouTube. There's also UGC content creating which it basically means you create content for brands but you don't post it on your pages. They use your content and they post it on their pages. They're paying you just to make the content but they're going to take it and they're going to post it on their social pages. So there's a lot of opportunities to go from gifted to brand deals. And one thing I learned is that I had to be really stern with some brands because till this day, a lot of brands will just wanna gift people things and they expect content out of it, which in some cases is okay. Like if it's a super big brand, like I'll make an exception because it's a brand that I really, really wanna work with. I think Armani Beauty was one of them. They sent me like all their foundations and concealers. They didn't pay me, but I wanted to work with them so bad because I love the brand so much. So I accepted the gifted collab, but something I would do is 
maybe if they reached out to me again and want to work with me again I would say hey like we had this successful partnership in the past it wasn't paid but I was wondering if we can maybe discuss a budget now okay let me do my lips while I'm talking so I'm using this lip liner from mented it's from Target and it's in the shade dope I'm gonna line my lips with that and then for lipstick oh yeah for lipstick I'm using this new one that I actually got in my YSL advent calendar this is in the shade I don't even know what that shade is that's what the bottom says it's like NM but it's a really pretty kind of nude shade obsessed with the color so I was saying how I had to be really stern with brands and lots of brands just expect um, you to create a reel a TikTok, a YouTube integration like stories they expect you to do all that for free before I used to be okay with it but now I'm just like you know what it's it's a lot of work to create content so I'm gonna let them know like hey I actually don't do unpaid collaborations these are my rates if you would like to discuss further or if you want to negotiate I'm up to negotiating um, but I think everyone should be paid for creating content no matter how small you are because it's work so like I said you don't even need that many followers and you can make money you just really got to stand up for yourself, stand up for your brand and be like, actually, I don't do unpaid collaborations. And before I was afraid to like say stuff like that to brands because then they would be like, oh, never mind. We don't want to work with you. But if they don't want to work with you, oh, well, they're lost. And a lot of the times I'll be like, okay, sure, like send over your rates. We can discuss. Most of the times they do say that. So always, you know, ask for what you want because they need you. They need the creator. I need to do a whole video on content creating tips. Did you pick a Christmas outfit yet? I have a couple ideas i'm actually going to do a video and share some holiday outfit ideas um i like have an idea what i want to wear for christmas and for for new year's so oh my god i cannot do lip liner while i'm talking because i messed it up so i have time for one more question someone asked how do you stay motivated to do your skincare slash self-care every morning and night so again i'm going to be honest i don't do that routine every night Sometimes there are sometimes I go to bed without doing my skincare. It's very rare But for the most part I really do try to stick to the routine because it makes me feel like I'm in control of my life It also makes me feel like I'm taking care of myself And I feel like if I'm not taking care of myself things are like a miss or not going right. I like feeling clean I like smelling good. <laughs> so I think that's what motivates me and you know hygiene is a big part of wellness and your health you know your physical health your mental health hygiene is a big part of it so I always try to be as hygienic as possible and just doing the routine like doing your skincare and going through all of that it just feels good I feel like it's the little part of the day where I can have it to myself and I'm just relaxed and I'm just taking care of myself and pampering myself and you know the days are crazy the days are busy and so like I feel like that's the one time at night where I can just be calm be relaxed like gather myself back up together and prepare for a really good night's rest. It really also helps me sleep better when I know that I'm clean and I did all my wellness things. There are some nights when I don't do the routine. There are some mornings when I don't do the routine. There are some days where I am so lazy and I literally feel like a potato and I just can't do anything and that's okay. We all get those days, especially when it's your time of the month. It's totally normal to not wanna do your routine. So I allow myself to, you know, let myself go on some of those days, but I always get back into it. Okay, so I'm done with my makeup, I think. Sometimes I feel like I forget a step, <laughs> but I think that is everything. So that's all for my current makeup routine. It's like my everyday makeup look that I do if I am going out or if I'm filming like a sit down video and I just wanna do like a full face of makeup. So I'll link all the makeup products that I used in my description. And I hope you guys got to know me a little bit better. If there's any other questions that you wanna know, leave a comment. I always try to answer all of my comments and if there's anything you're dying to know, please ask. But that's all for this video. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you in tomorrow's video. Yeah.